Hello guys, I'm back. Oh, man's health. You know, over the past few years, I've been really asking myself if those how celebrities train and eat videos from Man's Health were actually some kind of social experiment designed to show how far a large and well-known channel could go with nonsense and total bullshit and people would still watch and listen. But thanks to YouTubers like Derek, Filion, Mike Israel, and old school Greg Doucette, <laughs> Who are criticizing this verbal diarrhea coming from those videos, Men's Health took a few steps back and became more self-aware, so to speak, especially when it comes to previously mentioned type of videos. So when I was pushing through my hangover on Saturday morning and unsuccessfully trying to force the contents of my stomach into the toilet, a thought struck me like lightning. Maybe watching this week's Men's Health videos will do the job. And so I stumbled upon this video. And it immediately sparkled my interest because I'm a huge fan of the Boys series. Now, as you probably gathered from the title, this video is about Chase Crawford, aka The Deep, and his diet that helped him achieve his physique for the show. If you watch the show, you know that this guy has an amazing physique. He is very lean, very aesthetic, and what stands out the most about his body are his arms. And unlike most Hollywood superheroes, this guy is actually natural, at least in my opinion. He is in his 30s, he's been training for quite quite some time and his genetics are clearly above average. So without further ado, let's watch a few clips from this video together and see what he got right, what he got wrong and of course if you can actually learn anything useful from this. Or maybe it's just another cookie cutter cringe fest from Men's Health. Let's see. If I have 80% of the meals I'm eating are probably pretty clean, I hate that word, but it's a healthy thing. I'm cooking most of my meals, but on the weekends anything goes. I'll still throw it to a Big Mac or a pizza, sometimes airport egg McMuffin. I mean, what can you do? When you gotta do something, you gotta do it. Absolutely don't do this, because this is one of the biggest mistakes that people with less experience in this field do all the time, especially when they're trying to lose weight or cut. What will happen here is that people are going to starve themselves with some untasty low calorie foods during the week and then turn into Nikocado avocado on the weekends, which will create this endless loop of binge eating and then starving and repeat. And I know that he didn't mean it that way, but I'm just warning you not to do this. My advice for those trying to lose weight or trying to get shredded for summer, pick the low calorie foods that you enjoy eating, make your meals tasty and try to be in a small calorie deficit throughout the whole losing weight slash cutting season. It's much easier that way. The thing that really works for me if I'm getting back into my training for the boys or something I'm trying to look, look cut up for, the intermittent fasting thing does work. If you're, if you're kind of waiting to eat, and if you're doing any type of exercise in a fasted state, I mean, it doesn't matter, do a hike or a run for, for even 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, you'll start to see, see results and you'll start to feel, at least for me, it, felt, it feels really good to sort of wake up, drink a bunch of water, and get in a little bit of exercise before I eat. That's kind of the only rule if I'm getting back into training. I half agree with this, because intermediate fasting does in fact help some people to lose weight. However, when we are talking about athletes or just people who lift weights and have serious goals to gain muscle, strength and get lean, I really wouldn't recommend doing your workouts fasted. You will have much less energy and strength that way, especially if you are training hard and pushing yourself in the gym, as you absolutely should be. You can try doing some fasted cardio in the morning, but that's as far as I would go. Leave your lifting session for later in the day when you'll have at least one meal behind you. Oh, and one more thing. By spreading your meals evenly throughout the day, you will trigger muscle protein synthesis more often than you would with fasting. So usually after the gym, it's, it's gonna be high protein. I can crush eggs. I can do every type of egg you can, you can think of on the stove. So I'll do omelets, say, you know, anywhere from three to five eggs, scrambled, spinach, fruit, but I do love fruit. I do crave, you know, bananas and peanut butter and, and apples and peanut butter. All the berries, I do a lot of the berry stuff. Or I'll just make a shake. Okay, first of all, for the vast majority of people, eating more than three whole eggs in the morning is unnecessary because you're adding a lot of calories. So instead of five whole eggs, do three and then add some egg whites, for example. And again, remember that we are trying to get lean here, so we have to think about calories. Otherwise, whole eggs are one of the best protein and vitamin sources, and I'm not one of those fucking retards who say that eating more than two eggs per day will kill you. When it comes to veggies and fruits, I absolutely agree with him. Keep those in your diet, minus the peanut butter of course, if your goal is to get shredded. 
order from Air One if I'm lazy, um, which is ridiculous uh, because it's so insane. But I'll usually cook my lunch, just make a bunch of chicken breast, have it, sweet potato, broccoli in the fridge. I think cooking your own food uh, goes a long way into not eating a bunch of crap. Yes, I definitely recommend you cook your own meals because it's much easier to track your calories that way. I have not much to say about his lunch. It's great. There is plenty of protein, veggies and of course sweet potatoes as a very decent carb source. The only thing I would like to remind you of here is to keep an eye on how much oil you put in your pan because you can easily add 200 plus unnecessary calories that way. And usually I'll eat Pretty, a pretty big dinner. I don't know if that's ideal. I don't know if that's best. Some people say light breakfast, big lunch, light dinner. No, it's definitely not bad and you shouldn't worry about things like is my dinner bigger than my breakfast, etc. Because at the end of the day, it all comes down to a simple calorie equation. And even more, if you are on a serious cut or prepping for competition, I would advise you to leave the biggest meal for the evening because that's when you usually get hungrier and have the most cravings. Mainly for the boys, I'm doing circuit training. So I'll try to get in the gym five to six days a week. So I think 40 to 45 minutes is usually optimal. You don't need to be in there that much longer. But definitely agree with that. 45 minutes is more than enough if you train intensely. When it comes to training frequency, six days per week is on the higher end. So I would recommend four to five sessions if you're really pushing yourself in the gym. But sometimes I do an hour. Sometimes if I'm just not feeling it, you don't push it. I'm going like 20, 30 minutes. Well, yes, that's why you should lower your frequency or your volume. If you can't recover and have to cut your training sessions to a half, just rest more and do less sets and you will quickly see where you are. I like to do a lot of body weight stuff and old school stuff, just bench press. Like I'll do incline, flat bench, push ups, dips. I have a dip bar in my backyard and I have you know, I got these like adjustable dumbbells from 2020. And he talks about classic old school weightlifting training without too much complication, which I again absolutely agree with. Trust me, you would be surprised if you knew how much you can achieve with a pair of rusty dumbbells, an old bench, pull up and dip bars and a cup of Turkish coffee mixed with depression. If there's a will, there's a way. The same goes for drinking when your wife is obviously trying to hide alcohol from you. I got hooked on the bike in 2020, so I get out there full goof suit, lycra, it's, it's really embarrassing. I'm very happy to see him doing cardio. No matter if it's off season or cut, you should keep low to medium intensity cardio in your schedule and cycling is one of the best ways to do it. It's fun and it's easy on your joints. No, I'm not talking about that kind of cycling. Bruh. The stuff that always falls in the middle is all the boring stuff, right? It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the broccoli, it's the vegetables, it's the fruit, it's your lean meats. I don't really always, I'm not always thinking lean meat. I love steak, I love ribeye, fattier cuts. I love like whole chicken. The dark meat of the chicken is obviously the most flavorful. I'm kind of surprised that he didn't say chicken, broccoli and rice. Again, I agree with everything he said here and I'm happy that he mentioned eating steak and red meat because it's very nutritious and healthy when consumed in moderation. It doesn't always have to be plain chicken breast. I'm not a guy who counts anything. No, I can't. I long ago, I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm I can I can lean into like being OCD in other parts of my life. I'm like, I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna start in my food ever. You know, I do think portion control is a, is a thing. You kind of, you know, like, uh, you know, a baseball size thing of peanut butter is different than a, t you know, a teaspoon. Like, you know, so you can kind of, kind of watch it, but I don't restrict fruits. There's no fruits that are off limits. So for the end, he talks about how he doesn't weigh food or count macros and that it's all about portion control, which I would partially correct. Look, you can do everything he said here once you have some experience in this field. For example, when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I started taking my diet much more seriously. <laughs> Before that I was just lifting, which I also took seriously and I was trying to get as educated as possible in that area, but I never really paid too much attention to my diet because I just didn't have to. Being a quote-unquote ectomorph or hard gainer, I always got away with eating basically anything I wanted while remaining very lean. And I still do. But back to the topic. When I started taking my diet more seriously, just due to health and overall well-being, I began weighing my food and counting macros every day 
for about a year and a half. While doing so, I gained a lot of experience and developed a very good sense of how many calories certain meals have. So now when I look at a certain meal, I can estimate its calorie value pretty accurately without weighing food. So in that case, you really don't have to weigh your food and count macros all the time because it's unnecessary. It's really just about portion control. However, to reach that point, you will have to do it for a few months. I hope you understand me here. And a quick disclaimer, if your goal is to get super lean like single digit body fat, weighing food and counting calories will become inevitable at some point. But that's a topic for another video. And yeah, that's it. My final thoughts. Since I didn't watch a single piece of content from Men's Health for quite some time now, I was pleasantly surprised here, I must admit. I hope you learned something new today and if you have any questions or video recommendations, drop them in the comments below. Liking and sharing would help me a lot and see you next time.